So welcome back to my Vanguard portfolio update now for the month of March. We are just one month away from the new financial year. So this is the last one before we head into the new financial year here in the UK. As usual, let's jump straight over and have a look at the markets before we jump into the portfolio itself. I'll head over now straight away to the S&P 500. I think it's fair to say that this last month has been a pretty crazy, pretty crazy wild ride, I should say. Now, have a look now on screen. You'll see where the S&P 500 stands. Last month was no exception at the moment. It seems like everything is just going up and up and up. New all-time highs set every single week. At the moment, it sits at an impressive 5,200 points as I film this video. But I'll be honest, I'm struggling at the moment to try and keep up with things because things are moving so quickly. By the time this video goes live on Sunday, as you'll probably be watching it now, I don't doubt this number is probably going to be even higher. So do forgive me if the screenshots are going to be slightly out of date on this one. Now, this has gone up over 5% in the last month alone. And do bear in mind the S&P 500 and the kind of US market represents 65% of the entire market. So when it does move up by that amount, this is a huge sum of money going into the stock market. Now, one of the reasons why the stock market has gone up so sharply, at least in the last couple of days, was the FOMC meeting, which just took place yesterday as I'm filming this video. Now, Jerome Powell hinted that there would be three rate cuts heading toward this year, meaning that their current rate of 525 to 5.5% will be heading down more around that four and a half percent range. Now, as those rates reduce, that means that the cost of money effectively becomes cheaper, cheaper to borrow, easier to get into the economy, and also will push those savings rates down and those bond yields down. So we would expect to then see more money flowing into stuff like the stock market, things that actually produce money and things which can grow over the long term. So lots of people potentially trying to get ahead of that and jump into the stock market, setting all these new time highs, which are probably going to continue for a long, long time. And I wouldn't really bet against them and try and go short on this market. Now, these gains do come from a smaller section of companies inside that S&P 500. I know lots of channels now speak about and lots of the media speaks about the Magnificent Seven, all the big tech stocks where most of the gains have come. Let me just quickly put up on screen now actually for you where these year to date returns have come from and some of the biggest companies making those swings. Have a look on screen now. You'll see where some of the biggest gains have come from. You can see Supermicro up 220%, Nvidia up 80%. Bear in mind, this is just year to date. Constellation Energy 47% and Meta Platforms also up 40%. And that is just in not even three months, which is insane. Now on the flip side, which is always interesting to look at, right at the bottom, unfortunately, is Tesla, former stock market darling, which can't really seem to get going at the moment. Down more than 31% in, I think it's fair to say, quite a raging bull market going on at the moment. The funniest thing, in my view, is that it's doing even worse than Boeing, who seemingly can't even put a plane together when that is literally their entire job. But anyway, I could make a whole video in itself, couldn't it? Now, for me personally, looking at this is very interesting. It doesn't change my investing behavior, but I think it is always a very, very important lesson that anything can and does happen in the stock market. And all these short term swings, especially, don't really mean anything, but just just show you what can happen in the short term. Some huge companies with very, very powerful companies and very good quality companies can perform very badly in the short term and, you know, not necessarily amazing companies or companies can get very ahead of themselves on the top end as well. So always good to be aware of that. But the most important thing in my view always is to not let that affect your behavior, but always easier said than done. Now, a final stat for you, and I thought I'd just have a look on this list of all of these companies in the year to date performance, how well they've done. I wanted to see out of all of these companies, how many have actually beaten the average of the market. So year to date returns for the S&P 500 has been just under 10%. So it's 9.5 something at the moment, probably change as I make this video. Now, of all of those companies when I was scrolling around, only 170 of them have actually beaten the average return of the market. So that means that 330 have not. I think that's a really interesting statistic that shows that picking stocks is extremely difficult, even in the short term. So just another thing to keep paying attention to. And one final thing I would note on this kind of American market and all the craze going on at the moment. If you are a global stock market index fund investor, like I think a majority of my audience probably, and you do have some index funds, you have the S&P 500 and you have a global index fund. All of these amazing companies that are doing well, you own every single one of them. So you are a business owner in all of this success. So I think that's a really important thing to remember that you own a small slice of all these businesses. Okay, let's jump quick close to home now and see if the FTSE 100 has actually done anything. And you'll be surprised that this month, not really, unfortunately, um, month to day and certainly year to date returns are virtually flat. Has improved since I scripted this video just because we had the news from the US with the FOMC meeting and the Bank of England today should be announcing what's going on with their interest rate decision. But really, it's remained pretty flat. Now, do always bear in mind with the FTSE 100 that you can see up on screen now, this is just a price weighted market. 
doesn't include the returns that you do get from dividends. So um, if I do put up the total returns now on screen for you, you can see what actual dividends can do to those returns. However, it really is quite a lackluster performance, unfortunately, for all of those UK investors out there who love their UK stocks. And I know there's plenty of you out there who do. So very, very interesting at the moment. Let me also just put up on screen the FTSE All Share, because although the FTSE 100 is kind of the flagship index in the UK, as many of you will know, it doesn't really represent the UK market. So the FTSE All Share is a better gauge because it has all of the companies in all the bigger ones and the smaller ones, many of whom just trade inside the UK. But unfortunately, the story is pretty much the same. So flat for the month virtually and flat, therefore, also on a year to date basis. Really very little to say here from a perspective, from a UK market perspective, that the economy is not in the greatest place at the moment. We are in a bit of a holding pattern at the moment where GDP remains pretty flat. We're still trying to get inflation under control. And although inflation did come just under expectations, do bear in mind that all these inflation figures compound year on year. So although the news might congratulate everyone saying it's 3.4% rather than 3.5%, but that's prices at 3.4% higher than they were the year before, when the year before they were rising more than 10%, which is a huge, huge sum of money. And we wanted to keep an eye on that one as well, if that remains too sticky, because otherwise the Bank of England won't reduce those rates. So it's a very interesting place that we're in at the moment. So I don't worry too much about it, because as a global index fund investor, I don't allocate any more to the UK than really they should. In fact, I probably do overweight a tiny bit to it in my investing portfolio, but it's not like something that I care about too much. Now, the only interesting news, I think, from the UK market was the announcements in the spring budget or this UK British ISA. And I did a video on that one if you want to see that one. It did, did get quite a lot of views, actually. So probably many of you have already seen that one. That one is still in the kind of proposal stage at the moment. And they're kind of collecting information from all the platforms and brokers and you guys as well. And I probably should send them an email at some point to kind of give some of the feedback from that video. But it's not coming anytime soon. The extra £5,000 of tax-free investing that you're going to get probably won't even see the light of day until next financial year at best. But in all honesty, I can see it kind of just being swept under the rug and not really happening. I think if it does happen, the only platforms that it's going to be on are probably going to be the higher fee platforms because it's such a small amount of money and it's going to be restricted in what it can invest in. I think it's going to be an absolute pain to administer if you are an investing platform. Therefore, it's going to be the higher cost one, the higher fee ones, and they're going to try and sell you all of their high cost fees and their British funds, in my view. I think that could very much happen. So I'm not too excited about it. And I think it's a waste of waste of our time, to be honest. Now, quickly on crypto, I know it's a kind of love it or hate it in my audience. And it's very much like Marmite, but it is kind of an interesting thing to at least talk about because it is potentially going to become kind of more of a staple in the stock market. Certainly in the US with all of the exchange trading funds that have come about, this is really kind of solidifying itself as a commodity that people want to own. Now, the only reason I kind of bring this up is it had a bit of a wild ride. It was setting all new time highs, had a little bit of a dip but then is up 29% for the month, back at around $66,000 per coin as I make this video. Now, the only reason I wanted to mention it was because the FCA here in the UK, again, in another video I did, has said that they wouldn't necessarily be against these sort of products coming to the UK market. For the time being, it would be more for those institutional investors and professional investors. I, I really dislike that term professional investor, to be honest, because assuming they know what they're doing is just completely ridiculous. I think many retail investors I've got a lot more of the head screwed on than some of these fun, they're kind of professional ones, but that's another matter. And I think this does open the door to the future ETFs potentially, meaning that eventually at some point you could own a Bitcoin spot ETF inside your stocks and shares ISA, which would be the preferred route. And I think the more regulation in this space, the better to kind of bring the asset under control. And I really do think it can replace the likes of gold, for example, as that kind of commodity and that store of value at some point. I know many of you will disagree on that point. Um, I kind of do see it as potentially inevitable at this point. We'll never go all in, obviously. This is just a very small part of your portfolio. But interesting to know anyway. Right, time to log into the portfolio itself. And actually, funny, before we log into the portfolio, actually, as I'm on the Vanguard Investor homepage, this is a really, really good reminder now. And I'm glad they've got this countdown clock on here. Remember, we are just days away now from the end of the financial year. So please, 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 if you're in a position, go through all your finances and just make sure that you're using all of your allowances. Those include the allowances for all of your ISA accounts. So that's £20,000 per person per tax year. So if you do have some spare cash and you are in a lucky position like that, make sure you're using that £20,000 allowance. Even if you put that money into the account and don't invest it, make sure you use that allowance in case you do want to, because once you, if you don't use it, you obviously lose it. You can't go back. It's not like pensions where you can actually go back 
uh, through multiple years. The ISA allowances, you can't. Also, other things, make sure you're going back and using your dividend allowance and your capital gains allowance. I know, again, this is only going to be a relatively small number of people, and you are in a very fortunate position to be able to talk about things like that. But please do go back and consider using those and making the most of those things because they are going lower, unfortunately, and really, you'd be a fool not to be able to do that. So please go back and use those. And also, it's always important to remember, if you do want to open yourselves a Stocks and Shares ISA, I do leave the links to the platforms that I use in the description below and get yourself some free cash to get started. There are going to be also some ISA transfer bonuses, but I will talk about that one in a later video at some point. But I do leave the links below. And thanks to many of you who are using those, it does help support the channel as well. OK, so we are logged into the account now and the total portfolio value is £63,534. I will put a quick dollar figure up. I do forget sometimes, some months. We do have some international viewers, so hello from wherever you are in the world. I think my second most um, second most popular region is the US, so hello from wherever you are in the world. And then we get people from all over the world, which is great to see, so everyone's invested in, in, in interested in investing. And sometimes people must look at the pound value and think, is this better or worse than dollars? What's the exchange rate? So anyway, there's what it is. Now, I can't remember, is this higher or lower than last month? Um, I'll pop that pop the screen now, but if, or we can just have a look at the investments tab. So quick summary for those of you who might be new here or maybe joined the kind of Vanguard update investing bandwagon a few months ago. This on the Vanguard platform is where I hold my self-invested personal pension and I do hold an old ISA here, as you will see. So two sets of values here. You'll see that the, the pension is worth just under £50,000 and the ISA is worth £13,500. You'll see it's had a pretty good rate of return over the short period that it's been riding in this account and it's been on quite a wild ride as well. Now when you're in the Vanguard account, one of my favourite pages is going into the investments tab and going through the performance tab which we'll go in a second. Just as a quick summary again, I know many of you will have seen this before and probably many of you get bored so do forgive me for repeating myself but my only investment in my Vanguard account is the FTSE Global All Cap Fund accumulation version. This is a global market fund. It means I own pretty much every single stock in the global stock market that's worth owning. In its market weight, nice and simple. And also because it's a mutual fund on the Vanguard platform, every penny that's invested remains invested. There are no dividends that gets paid. And also if I did want to add any money into the pension, for example, I wouldn't have to have any money left if I was buying ETFs. So that's kind of a separate topic, but mutual fund is really, really nice and easy for doing that one. You can see, unfortunately, I have 16p of cash here. So at some point, I might have to add to this and, and clean that up so we can have zero cash because, you know, that could compound over many, many years. Now, let's briefly have a look at the performance tab and I'll probably get my answer to whether we are seeing a brand new all-time highs. I think we are at the moment, which is really, really nice to see. And that rate of return now, my personal rate of return up at nearly 25%. So what I like to do um, often is I like to go back month to month. Not that this changes any of my investing behaviours, but... I think it's just really interesting to enjoy this ride as an investor and understand some of the things you will have to put up with if you want to be an investor. In times like these, it is extremely easy to be an investor. For example, as you can see up on screen now, from the start of November 2023 through to March 2024, as we're speaking now, every single month has just been green, 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 green. And this is a very, very easy time to be an investor to get carried away. But also as an investor, you have to put up with the bad times as well. And if we go back, for example, toward the end of 2022 and toward the middle part of 2022, you would have seen the account have huge negative months. Now, the challenge to be a good investor, in my view, is really to not care. Not care whether that is a negative number or a positive number. Always very, very much easier said than done. But truly, this is how I behave. And actually, I hope when I do these videos, you can see that, that my what my thought process is. I just do this to share the journey. That's what's most really important is that we can be more open with our finances and our investments to show what really happens and the thought process that goes through my head. But I don't make a single change to this one. Now, as we go into the new financial year, and I will do a video on this one soon, but as those rules change about the different ISAs you can contribute to, which is a really, really good rule now that you don't have to stick with one single stocks and shares ISA, I may you know, even move this ISA, for example, to Invest Engine. Or I may consider even putting a little bit more extra in now alongside my other ISAs as we move into the next financial year. Because I like I liked the fact that I have my different investment accounts separated. So Vanguard's great for the pension and an old ISA. Invest Engine is my current ISA and I'll probably continue using that ISA um, as we go into the, the new tax year as well. And then Trading 212, which I, I don't share live on 
YouTube because I want to keep them on private for myself, but that is where I just hold my individual stocks. And I purposely, that's also an ISA by the way, but I purposely like that separation because I know from, you know, knowing myself that I potentially would dip into those things and make little stupid decisions because I'm human after all, right? I, I do enjoy the odd speculative bet on, on different um, stocks that, that I might see a dip in, for example, and I have a little bit of, um, a little bit of confidence in that they're, they're doing okay. I am a sucker for a good deal at the end of the day. And I am kind of, <laughs> as a full-time finance creator, I can get sucked in a bit. But having that separation means that that's the only money that I'm allowed to kind of play around with individual stocks, if that makes sense. Everything else is just set and forget, monthly direct debit, in, 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 and that part will never change. But with the flexibility of the new financial year, being able to choose which ISIS you put it into could be something worth doing. But loads of videos coming up, I'll be doing that in the new financial year. Oh, I just noted, by the way, if you're ever wondering um, kind of fees on the Vanguard platform, so it's 0.15% of the total amount invested, um, fees are taken quarterly, as you can see here on screen. Um, I just have mine set for direct debit, so it just comes out of my bank account. You can pay also by debit card, I think, um, and also from cash in your account. I just pay by um, direct debit, so it's really, really nice and easy. And at least compared to my investments when I was using Hargreaves Lansdowne, this is loads cheaper. Um, it's good to see some more competition though in the market, and as these newer platforms come on board, we are potentially gonna see a sit, I think, um, from Trading212. At least last time, I think I was reading one of their comments on Reddit from one of their official administrators saying that they are working on a SIP, which is going to be very, very interesting. I think more competition in the market is brilliant. Um, we do have that Invest Engine SIP, which is the most recent one they brought out, which I am actually using at the moment. So look out for an update soon on that one. But more competition in the market is really, really great for that one. And I'm really looking forward to seeing where the kind of UK market goes. Another bit of news, sorry to keep you so long on this portfolio update, is Robinhood. Um, I did just download their investing app. They're out in the UK now. It's not, there's no ISA, so kind of a bit of a drag at the moment, but the app itself is pretty nice. And again, low cost, fractional shares, US stocks, very, very easy to trade, for example. I think they could also do very well in the UK market, but it will kind of depend, really a lot will hang on that ISA. I have actually emailed their team to say, any kind of news on the ISA? Because I think that will be a game changer. I don't think really, anyone in the UK should be investing outside of an ISA if they can avoid it. I think it doesn't make any any sense, especially in that long term, because the capital gains and dividends allowances are so low now. I think even with a kind of small, medium sized account, you can easily breach that and it just makes no sense. So I really want to see people creating these ISA accounts. Lightyear, another good example of an app that I want to see creating an ISA as soon as possible because I want to see more competition in that market. But anyway, I've rambled way too long now. Best ISA update video will have to come in April. So look out for that one. I will see you in the next video. But as always, thanks so much for your support. Happy investing.